If creating a travel capsule and packing your suitcase for a quick getaway feels overwhelming to you, come on along inside this video because I'm going to do just that for a quick trip to Denver. Hello, I'm Kristen from Kristen Kane Style. Welcome, I'm so glad that you are here. Thank you for stopping by my channel. If you're not familiar with me and my work, I'm a style and mindset coach, and that means I can help you create a wardrobe you love wearing. I can help you figure out what's really getting in the way and what in your mindset is causing your style struggles. So often I think that our style struggles and the things that we run into that prevent us from having an incredible sense of style and feeling really amazing when we get dressed, isn't what we think it is. We think it's hard to shop and that nothing fits our body and that we can't find anything we like and we don't really know our style and we're not sure how to put things together. We don't know what colors look good on us. I have found after over 20 years in closets and fitting rooms that that actually, well, that can be true, I guess, that actually isn't the problem. The problem is most often a limiting belief that is going through your mind every time you go to do any of the things that have to do with getting dressed. So. I, I could talk about that all day. I will just cut it here because I have a bag to pack and say that if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, style therapy is how we do that. There's a link down below. You can book a free consult call and we can get you started to sort out your style struggles and get them resolved so that you can create the style you really wanna create and understand the mindset so that you can begin to shift your thinking around all things getting dressed. So today I am getting ready to go to Denver for a few days. My youngest uh, child is graduating from college and we are going to celebrate him. So I have pulled some things from my closet, kind of um, anticipating what I believe I'm going to take, what I believe the weather is going to be. I have nothing in the suitcase yet. This is basically what's going to go in the suitcase or some combination of it. And I thought I would bring you along because so often women tell me that they really struggle with pulling together a small capsule to take on a weekend getaway or a short trip, and they're not sure how to pack a suitcase. And so I'm going to, at the end of this video, share actually putting it in my bag because making this video is holding me accountable and I will get it packed so that I can be ready to leave. And uh, I will talk you through kind of how I came up with this capsule, why I chose the pieces I did. I think one of the problems when you try to pack for a trip or a getaway is that if you aren't already wearing and loving your wardrobe, if you haven't created a wardrobe and you don't have a sense of your own style and it doesn't feel authentic and fabulous to you in your day-to-day -day life, then there's this idea that when we travel, we have to be all the things and look all the ways that we don't look in our daily lives. So we expect our travel capsule to perform at a much higher level and we expect ourselves to look more put together and more fabulous and feel more incredible on our getaway because it's a getaway of whatever sort. And we want that time away to really feel amazing and we wanna look and feel amazing in our clothes. So you might often find yourself packing the things that you never wear at home that you often think you want to wear at home and you know pass by in your closet for another day or a different occasion but you really wish you were wearing them the the version of you you aspire to be is wearing that collection of clothing and you're not wearing it at home so you think that well i'm going away so this is my opportunity to step into this other me and wear these pieces that i'm not quite brave enough or don't feel quite ready enough whatever the case is to wear at home. And that usually creates more frustration when you're trying to pack because you're pulling together pieces you're not super familiar with, you don't really know how they work together, you don't wear them at home because you don't know what to wear them with and now you're trying to put them into a suitcase with even fewer pieces and make great outfits that are going to um, kind of sustain you and support you on your travels and it usually backfires. All of that sounds to me right now like it is a definite topic for a future video because I think that it's a really important um, thing to understand that if you're not wearing the best of the best of your wardrobe at home, if your whole wardrobe isn't lighting you up and you're regularly utilizing all those pieces, then when you go to travel, you're asking a lot of the pieces you already aren't sure how to wear or aren't wearing, and it usually can backfire. And you end up with either way too much in your suitcase or pieces that you don't end up wearing because they're not being, uh, because they're not actually what you needed on that trip. So I'll address that in another video. For today, I'm just going to share with you what I pulled and why I pulled it in hopes that if you are getting ready to pack for a getaway, some of this information is helpful. And then I am going to share more kind of specific logistics and strategizing about how I actually pack a suitcase and what I do to get ready to pack my suitcase and all of that. So that'll be at the end. First, I'm going to walk through the pieces. Here we go. Okay, so 
First, I'm going to be gone for six days. So I have a travel day on each end and then four full days in Denver. And I have a college graduation to attend and we will be having a little um, graduation party for my son and his friends and their families. And uh, we have some thrifting to do because some of my very favorite thrift shops in the whole world are in Denver and so we're in the Denver area. And so we are going to spend some I believe some good long time, I'm hoping, thrifting. Uh, travel day. So I'm going to wear a pretty tried and true outfit. My travel outfits are usually a t-shirt and jeans and a cardigan or a tank top and jeans and a cardigan or a long sleeve t-shirt and jeans and a cardigan um, or pant, travel pants, something comfortable on the bottom. My kids used to tease me that when I would try on a pair of pants and really love them, they would say, oh, are they airplane pants? Because they know that I have a very specific need for the airplane. The pants need to be kind of like sweatpants in comfort, but still look chic or look put together. And so I'm going to wear some airplane pants. So my t-shirt of choice for this weekend is going to be the Hooray for Gratitude t-shirt. I love this t-shirt. Um, it's comfortable. It's easy to wear. It's very me. It feels good. It makes me happy. I'm going to wear that t-shirt. And then I am either going to wear the sweater I have on or I'm going to wear this cardigan. I think that the weather in Denver is going to be pretty warm. And so this cardigan, as much as I love it, it is pretty thick and it's a really short flight from Salt Lake to Denver. So it's not like I'm going to be on a cold airplane for a long time. This sweater is thinner and will work over this t-shirt. So I think it's going to be the sweater I have on, but I'll hang this one up here because this would easily layer over top of this t-shirt with a pair of jeans. However, I think that for my travel pants, I'm going to wear this new pair of pants that I recently purchased at Old Navy. I tried them on months ago and really liked them and then didn't buy them and then I couldn't find them online. And the reason that I couldn't find them online when I went back because I was pretty ready to buy them is because they're men's. I was thinking they were women's and could never find them in the women's section. Uh, they are men's, they are part of a suit actually. They're linen, I think they might be a linen cotton blend. They have a blazer that matches. I do not have the blazer, but these were on sale recently. Uh, and I thought I really want a pair of green trousers. I have not found a pair that I love. I ordered a couple pairs from Everlane that just turned out to be too big and a little too heavy for summer. So I, these are great. I cuff the bottom and they're just a little bit slouchy and I'm really pleased with them. So these are going to be my airplane pants for this trip because they're super comfy and I'm going to wear this leopard belt. I am in need of a new leopard belt and I cannot find one. I used to have a surplus of leopard belts and right now they seem to be hard to find. So if any of you know where I can find a great leather belt um, that is leopard, I would love to um, have that info, please. So this will likely be my travel outfit. I will also probably, though it's gonna be 90 when I land, take this pretty lightweight cotton scarf with me because I like to have an extra layer just so that if it is chilly on the plane or if it's cool while I'm running errands or it ends up being cooler in the evening or whatever, I have a scarf with me. So this scarf will go um, with this outfit for the airplane. Then once we are there, uh, like I said, we're really just going to be thrifting and doing some stuff in Boulder, you know, kind of going to visit some, some people and, and some places. And then there will be Father's Day on Sunday. So we will, I'm sure, you know, do something fun for Father's Day. And so uh, I'm not hiking or doing any great outdoor activities. I will be taking just a pair of workout shorts and a tank top to work out at the house that we're renting. And I'll take just some lounge clothes, some loose linen pants and a t-shirt and a sweatshirt to wear at home and pajamas and a bathing suit because I have found that a bathing suit is small and tucks in nicely. And there have been times when I travel and while the house that we're staying in doesn't have a pool or anything, there have been times when opportunities have come up where I could have used a bathing suit and didn't have one. So I'm gonna take a bathing suit. And then let's see, for uh, the days when we're just kind of hanging, I'll talk you through the couple tops that I'm taking. So these tops, this is just a little Joy t-shirt from, I think it's, Elamos, it is Elamos, thrifted this. And a very old, old navy blouse that I have worn a lot and loved. And a little tank also thrifted from Uniqlo. It has um, flowered embroidery on the front, just all navy. And a Madewell white t-shirt. So those tops, I think I'm going to take all of them because they all would work with the green pants. So I can pair all of them. I had they, these two on together yesterday like those. I can pair all of them with the green pants and I can also put a sweater over top of them. 
a cream sweater over top of them would be better than this one, which is why I hesitate to bring this little bit patterned navy and cream sweater because it's not quite as easy with the neckline to layer as this one is. So I'm undecided about that just yet, but these are probably the tops that I'm bringing. And I'm bringing only one pair of jeans. I'm hopeful that I'm going to come home with some new Levi's after this trip. Uh, but these Levi's I love, they are comfy and slouchy and easy to wear, and they will pair well with all of the things, all the tops that I'm bringing. I'm good with all of those. And then let's see, so these tops will all, you know, go easily for the days that we're just thrifting and doing things. When I thrift, you may have seen on other videos, I always wear um, a little camisole underneath whatever I'm wearing so that I, because the thrift stores that I go to almost always um, have no fitting rooms. And so I can wear this and take off whatever I have on over top of it. And I can try on even little tank tops over top of this and know if it fits or doesn't fit. So I'm going to take this. In addition, in the event that it were cool, I could wear it underneath things as a layer. And I can also wear it underneath. I'm not planning to go out to dinner or anything like that, but I could put it on with a little blazer or a cardigan and dress it up a little bit instead of wearing it more utilitarian for thrifting. So that will go so that I can thrift with it. Then graduation. I am not exactly sure yet what I'm wearing to graduation. I will share a little tale. So I worked at Anthropology when my first child graduated from high school. So Greta, Greta graduated from high school in 2017 and I worked at Anthropology and the thing to do was to buy a new dress for your child's graduation. Fine. And I don't wear many dresses, but I bought a dress that I loved. It was kind of um, oatmeal colored and black and gauzy and sleeveless and beautiful. Graduation was in late May. It was a, it was a great dress. I was very excited to wear it. Then the Thursday before graduation on Saturday, the Thursday before we got about nine inches of snow. So 18th of May, nine inches of snow, graduation is Saturday, May 20th, it is still cold. So I wear long pants and sort of a simple blouse and a blazer and a puffy furry winter jacket and a scarf. And they have plowed the field so that we can sit outside and have graduation outside. And it is crisp, feels more like October than May, but I do not wear the dress. I do change into the dress when we get home. It's still a little too chilly for it, but I wear it, it's great. That situation taught me that I don't actually need to buy anything new for graduation. This also goes back to, if you have a wardrobe filled with pieces you love wearing, chances are when an invitation comes up or an occasion comes up, you can put together a pretty great, very appropriate outfit that will feel very authentic and fabulous for you that does not require you buying a new dress or a new something to wear to this event. So I have had three kids now graduate from high school and two from college and one about to graduate from college. And I have only purchased one dress ever. And I only wore it that very first graduation and wore it to other things, but never to another graduation. That All that to say, I don't believe you need a new outfit for something like a child's graduation. If you have a wardrobe filled with pieces that really work for the life that you live, obviously I don't go to graduation all the time, but I know my pieces well enough and I know my style well enough that I can put together an outfit that I feel appropriate in as the mother of the graduate and not have to buy anything new. So I am wearing these pants for graduation. I think I have another alternative. Down at the end, you'll see a dress. I'll share in a second. So I believe I'm wearing these pants for graduation. They are from Old Navy. Uh, they were returned at the store. I did not see them in the store anywhere on the regular racks. They were in the sale area on the returned racks. Uh, they're fabulous. I wore them for my anniversary dinner, out to dinner. Um, they are really great. They're like a really lightweight poplin almost. Um, and they just hang really nicely. They're super comfortable. So I'm going to wear these pants with one of these tops. And again, I'm not sure I'm taking all that I'm showing you. I just was, now I'm struggling with the hanger here. I just was trying to pull together a, a bunch of options. So it would be those pants. My first thought is, would be those pants with this little top. It is knit, but it, um, and it basically is a t-shirt, but it has a boucle texture to it and it feels a little Chanel-like to me and it's striped, so it's so me. So that uh, t-shirt with these pants and probably one of these two blazers. So this is 100% Irish linen. It is Talbot's uh, and I thrifted it. It's Talbot's Petite and it's still very long, uh, but I love the way it fits. I really love this jacket and I haven't worn it very much. So this is a maybe. And this one is a loft, just um, kind of gabardine, cotton gabardine uh, 
navy blue blazer also. So one of these two is going, I'm not taking both, but one of these two blazers with this little top underneath it, with some sort of a gold necklace or two, and these pants will be my graduation outfit. And I will likely wear these shoes with it. So that will be what I wear for graduation. Didn't have to buy anything new. The blazers will go over other tops if I wanted them to. I could wear it over the Hooray for Gratitude t-shirt. I could wear it over, you know, the a plain white Madewell t-shirt. So the blazers, if we were going out for lunch or out for breakfast on Father's Day or something, I could wear that with a pair of jeans and a t-shirt or a little top. The other couple options I have for graduation, if it's really swelteringly hot, I could wear this little um, Universal Thread Target thrifted top. It's cute with those pants and with a blazer over top of it. That would work. If I didn't choose to wear a blazer, I could just wear this J. Jill thrifted 100% linen navy blue blouse. This is really pretty also. I tend to like a blazer, especially kind of at something like a graduation. I, I'm from the East Coast. I have that kind of proper sense of put together in a blazer. So I probably, I could wear a blazer over this, but I probably wouldn't because I think it would be a little warm. So I think that this probably will go with jeans or with these tan pants for, like I said, Father's Day lunch or some other thing that we would do instead of graduation. I think graduation, because of the temperature, will probably, and we'll be inside, which will be nice also, so there will be air conditioning. And if it rains, it won't matter. Um, so I think it'll be a short sleeve top for graduation and then this long sleeve blouse I could wear with these pants or with jeans for something else. Next, I am taking a skirt. You might say, Kristen, I never see you talk about skirts or rarely do you talk about skirts. That is very true. So this skirt I've had for a very long time, probably four or five years, I guess that's not a very long time, but a while. I bought it at Primark in Pennsylvania one year. And it is amazing because you literally can twist it up. You can do no wrong to this skirt. It just always looks like this, right out of the wash, twisted, hung dry, tumbled dry, doesn't matter and it's comfortable and I can wear it with any number of little t-shirts, navy blue sweaters, whatever. Almost always when I'm wearing this skirt, it is because I'm thrifting. And when I thrift, I like to wear a skirt because I can try pants on underneath. I can put on a skirt if I wear pants thrifting, and I think I've shared this here, I can put on a skirt over top and then take my pants off and put on other pants that I'm trying on and even take my skirt off if I need to once I have the other pants on my body. It's just easier if I wear a skirt right in the door and I can just try things on underneath it. So this skirt I'm taking for the sole purpose of being able to thrift. And as you probably can tell, whether I choose to wear it with the you know little t-shirt, the navy one, or this one, or even really this little, I'm only juggling here, uh, even with this little tank, forget the white t-shirt, it's kind of difficult to see. There we go. Um, I could wear it with this little tank if it's really warm. The point is that a skirt is usually not in my normal wheelhouse. I'm not sure why. I just usually prefer pants. Or if it's really hot, I prefer a dress. Um, however, this skirt is great and it's great for thrifting and I will probably wear it with just a little pair of white sneakers. I'm also bringing a brown pair of sandals. These are from Target from a few years ago. They're Morona, tells you how old they are. And I have them in gold and in black because I don't find sandals very easy to fit my foot um, because my foot is long and narrow and these sandals fit my foot. I can walk for miles in them. They're outrageously comfortable. So I will be taking these and I will be taking these and the little um, two-tone ballet flat that I showed. If I'm feeling really girly and festive, I will wear this dress. So it's a wrap dress. It does wrap proper around. You maybe have seen it. I shared it on a thrifted video when I first purchased it. Um, it's a really cute dress. It's a lot of fun to wear. I've worn it to some bluegrass shows. It's super swingy. Uh, I could wear it easily with the little ballet flat uh, shoe and, um, or the sandal if it were really warm, though I'll probably wear a closed toe to graduation. I tried it with a blazer and it looked really cute. And so uh, I think that it'll depend on the mood, whether or not I wear a dress for graduation. I do like that dress and it is possible that I will choose to wear a dress. And then this dress, I thrifted. I have this dress. I purchased this dress new from Amazon. The company is called Yes No. I purchased this exact same fabric, this same dress, only in the sleeveless um, kind of spaghetti strap, little sundress version in this pattern and in kind of a bright yellow and green and red pattern. And then I think Greta found this thrifting one day here in Utah. 
And I tried it on and I, she didn't end up wanting it. And so I tried it on and I thought, I actually love that dress so much in the tank and or in the skinny strap. And sometimes it's just a little too much exposure for me when it's really hot and all that great. I don't mind having that much showing, but I, I thought that I like the idea of having this as a t-shirt dress, essentially super oversized, as you can see, and just comfy and flowy. So I'm going to take this because I think I will change into this for the party back at um, my son's house after the graduation proper uh, because it's easy and comfy and I can put a sweater over it, whether it would be this little sweater or um, this sweater, which I will probably take also. It's just a little bit sheer, but is cute layered over top of things and gives me a little bit of warmth when the temperature gets a little cooler in the evening as it does in places that are dry. Uh, on the East Coast, it was never an issue because it was always humid enough that even when it got to be nighttime, it was still hot and usually humid and sticky. And in Utah and Colorado, that is different. So sometimes I need a layer in the evening. So I think I'm gonna take this one because it's fun and it's pretty and it's festive and it feels good and I can wear it with little sneakers or sandals and I can put a sweater over it if I feel like it's gonna get chilly. That's what I'm taking. Now I need to get it in my suitcase. So I am going to set things up a little differently here so that you can actually see what I'm doing in my suitcase and I'm going to pack my suitcase. So now let's talk packing logistics. So first things first, packing list. I, a long time ago, got tired of writing the same things over and over again every time I would try to leave the house um, on any kind of a trip. And so I just typed up a very simple, basic list on a Google Doc so that I don't forget anything. I print that out and then I use a pencil and or pen and cross the things off as I put them in my suitcase. Some people advise putting this list then a clean copy into your suitcase and keeping track of the things that you actually do use or things that you forgot so that when you come home, you can update the list and be ready for, be more ready for the next trip. I've never been quite that organized. So my list, I just keep using and then I leave the list at home and put the things in the suitcase and after I've crossed things off um, and then try it again the next time. Although this time, now that I'm saying it out loud, uh, I might give it a shot and put a blank list in my suitcase and keep track of the things that I wear and don't wear and be able to update and evaluate when I get home. I'm a firm believer in packing cubes. I have packed suitcases for a lot of years. I am a full-blown Sagittarius when it comes to wanderlust and desire to travel. I love to travel. I love to pack a suitcase. I have done it every way, every way. And I have found for me, packing with packing cubes, rolling the garments in packing cubes, and separating things by kind of category makes it easiest for me to fit everything in my suitcase and easiest for me to find things when I get where I'm going. So for instance, this little bag, these are from Ikea. Ages ago, I would buy them again, but I do not believe they still have them. Uh, these little bags I usually use for like socks and underwear and things like that, smaller items that I wanna have separate. And then I just keep an entire collection of packing cubes um, tucked into my suitcase so that I have what I need when it's time to go. This is essentially a shoe bag, but I can use it for all sorts of things. I have a couple of mesh bags that I use so that if I put things in here, cords and whatever, I can see what's in there when I'm rooting through my suitcase or my carry-on. Uh, but I just have all different sizes and a couple bigger than this of packing cubes so that I can separate things, you know, kind of all the t-shirts and all the, um, pajamas and workout clothes, or I can separate it by days. There've been times when we've gone on trips where some of the trip I'm going to be in one place doing one thing and some of the trip I'm going to be in another place doing another thing. And so I can pack packing cubes that are for the first part of the trip where I might be more active or it might be a more formal part of the trip. And then I can pack packing cubes that have the garments that I will wear on the other side, um, on the other part of the trip. My uh, carry-on, under the seat carry-on, all of my bags are carry-on. I do carry-on only always, unless for some reason the airplane is really small and I don't have any other choice. I always have my bag with me and have it in the upper, in the overhead compartment. So my carry-on under the seat bag, I purchased, I used to use a backpack and my kids made tons of fun of me. It was like a Rick Steves travel backpack and they hated it. Um, I loved it because it was so light. Oftentimes I find I had a leather one for a while. It was way too heavy, even when it was empty. I like the bag that starts out light, but then only the only weight that's to it is really the stuff I'm putting in it. This I got at Target kind of on a whim one day when I needed a new bag, and it has been amazing. I would 
buy this in a better version if I could find something very similar. It is nylon, so it is not heavy when it's empty and it holds my computer and all of the things and it has just the right amount of compartments and I really like it. I think oftentimes what happens with our travel bags, our suitcase and our carry-on bag is we get so used to where the compartments are, similar to a wallet or a handbag that we don't wanna change. And so sometimes we keep those things after they're really not performing or looking all that great because we're afraid to have to relearn it. And I am glad that I did the relearning on this because it's been a really great bag. This suitcase is about two years old. I purchased it, um, I think in June, two years ago. It is from Monos and it is carry-on sized and hard shell, as you can see and navy, which I love. And actually I think it's called like Pacific blue or ocean blue or some sort of watery blue. I looked, I did the research. I looked at away suitcases and at a lot of other brands. And I landed on this one because I like the color. I like their return policy or their um, warranty policy. And it just felt like it was the right upgrade for me. I had been using a soft sided travel pro for probably 15 to 18 years prior to that. It had been everywhere with me. I loved that bag. It was definitely a case of hanging on to it because I knew exactly where everything went and that felt really comforting. And yet it wasn't repairable. It had some wheel trouble and some zipper trouble and it was time to just retire it. So this one has been a great replacement. I'm actually super glad that I have it and, and love packing it. So I'm going to do that now. Packing time. As I said, I have a bunch of different packing cubes different sizes, depending on what I want to pack in there, how I want to arrange things. I am just going to show you kind of how I do it so that you can see my process in case you are struggling to figure out how to pack a suitcase. This is what works for me. So let's start with just a simple t-shirt. I fold the t-shirt kind of like I would if I were folding it in a drawer usually. And then, well, actually that's not true because I fold the KonMari way. So I would fold my t-shirt. Actually, none of that is true because I hang my t-shirts. But when I fold t-shirts, I fold them in half, you know, kind of like this. And then I fold them again so that they would stack like this um, in just a little kind of envelope package way. That's how I fold when I fold anything. I create a rectangle because Marie Kondo has changed the way I fold. I've been a really good folder for years because I worked much, much retail. However, um, I usually now hang my t-shirts because I have the space for that and I like to be able to see them. So all of that to say, I create this sort of a rectangle and then I roll it. And I find that rolling genuinely keeps things smoother and less wrinkled when I get where I'm going. And then I just take the packing cube kind of sit it open and start filling by tucking one thing in against the edge. I'll shut my suitcase here so maybe you can see that better. And this um, mono suitcase comes with a dust cover, kind of a pouch that slides over it. That's really great for being able to put it on my bed without getting my bed dirty with the wheels and all the yuck. So I start loading the packing cube from one end and just roll as I go. So t-shirt, Fold it, just, I could flatten it out, you know, really old school retail style, nice and smooth. And it's not that I never do that because I like my clothes to be smooth when I get where I'm going um, and not wrinkled. So starts like that and then pretty tightly, kind of snug, smoothing things down as I go. I just roll and then I tuck it right in next to that one. And I keep going and I do this for things that are woven. Now I will probably have an iron when I get where I'm going. I don't take a steamer with me when I travel. Uh, I hang things in the shower if needed, kind of in the bathroom with the shower running when I take a shower. That humidity usually helps um, drop out the wrinkles. I also sometimes spray things with the spray bottle that I use on my hair with just water in it. When they dry, if they're hanging, the gravity usually will pull out the wrinkles. So same thing, same process. This is a woven top, but I do the same thing. Nice and smooth and then roll because I want to make sure that the neckline and the hemline aren't getting all crinkled so that when I go to wear it, it's all mushed up. And then I just tuck them like this. In the event that this doesn't feel like it's fitting well, sometimes I will put longer things against the side and the narrower things when they're rolled kind of in the middle. Essentially, it's like a puzzle. You're just trying to fold the thing so that when all is said and done, it works. Now this one with its ruffled collar and its button placket kind of 
I will fold this one backwards. So I'm going to make the inside be the front of the shirt in an attempt to keep it just a little bit less wrinkly. And I'm not gonna fold it in half first. I am just going to start the roll. And with the linen, I'm not squishing it quite as tight. I'm gonna let a little bit of air stay in there. And then, as you can see, this one is a little longer. So I'm gonna now change my direction because that'll work a little bit better. And then these can kind of be my be my end pieces, my end caps, and tuck those in there. It's not a perfect science. You just want to get them in there, kind of rolled and um, smooth and snuggled together, because that will also help keep them from being wrinkled. So this one I'm not going to roll up yet because it is covered with lint. It almost looks like I washed it with a towel, which a white towel, which I don't believe I did. Uh, so I'm going to use the lint brush on that. I do take a little tiny lint brush with me. It's in my suitcase, but I'm going to use my big lint brush on this before I roll it up and tuck it in there. And let's see, I'll do this one. And I do the same thing with pants. So I fold the pants, as I'll show you in just a second, and then roll them in really the exact same way, uh, just so that they stay nice and smooth and I don't have to iron or um, hang anything in the shower, you know, do a lot of work to make them look fine when I get where I'm going. Uh, the skirt, as I said, is really kind of a magnificent situation where the pleats, because it's kind of softly pleated, the pleats, if you have a pleated scarf or a pleated skirt um, or a scarf that's kind of crinkly, so to speak, you can literally roll it up on itself and actually rubber band it or, you know, kind of gather it with something um, to keep it this way when it's wet and let it dry like this or almost dry like this. And then when you untwist it, like I said, scarf or skirt, um, it will have the pleating in it that it had originally because the twisting it will kind of replete it and then it'll dry in that shape. So the skirt usually kind of gets twisted and tucked in somewhere. Once I'm packing my suitcase, I have curls everywhere. Um, so that it'll kind of just take up an empty hollow little corner. Pants I'll show you now. So these pants are not freshly ironed. I might iron them before graduation, although given the nature of them, not sure if I will. So I just have them folded, you know, kind of flat in half. And again, my goal is always to start with a rectangle so that, or to get the piece to a rectangle that I can then roll or fold pretty easily. So they're currently a rectangle. And these I am going to kind of manipulate into a little bit more of a folded shape just because they're so smooth and I think that will allow them to work well in my suitcase. So whether I tuck them in this way or flat on top of some things or flat in a um, packing cube, you know, I could zip that closed. I think this will do better than properly rolling the pants. I also roll jeans when I travel. So these, I usually tuck in that little bit of the butt if it needs to, again, to make a rectangle. And then I just try to gather them pretty tightly and roll them up. These often I don't put in a packing cube. I just tuck on the side of my suitcase with my shoes and shoe bags and kind of my hair dryer. I have a little travel hair dryer because they're a little bulkier, but they stay nice and snug and out of the way um, and compact and contained when I roll them into a little bunch. Uh, blazers are a little different. I don't roll a blazer. But I usually will take the arms and kind of flap them around to the back a little bit, sometimes across the back, sometimes kind of diagonally across the back, keeping the shoulders pretty square, and then put it just on the very top, the kind of the last pile um, that goes in. I will just put this on the top and then zip, cover the zipper, you know, part over top of it, so that it remains pretty flat and in pretty good shape when I get there. The other way to do a blazer is because sometimes the shoulder on the blazer is a little wider than the bag, is to fold it in half this way. Again, you can tuck the sleeves inside the fold into the very middle, or you can keep the sleeves out and let them kind of drape across the back and then fold it again. Essentially, you're going for that rectangle so that everything kind of fits nicely, um, almost like a puzzle in your suitcase. Dresses, same thing. I'm gonna make a rectangle. And with this dress, because it's so, voluminous uh, and the skirt is so wide, I am going to kind of let the, the top tuck inside and then work with just the bottom, just the skirt part. So again, going for 
basically a rectangle and then smoothing it out and then rolling. So I'll grab it at one end and just start kind of tucking and rolling and rolling and rolling. And then this one probably could tuck inside with these t-shirts and just snuggle in there. And I find that these packing cubes are pretty forgiving. You can mush a whole lot into them and then squish them down. The Ikea ones um, are great. It's just they only have a zipper going one way. Some of the other ones that I have have a zipper on both sides, which when you are one-handedly trying to wrangle the um, stuff inside the packing cube, I find that it's kind of a luxury to have a zipper from both sides. It just makes it a little easier to, to get it shut. And almost all packing cubes are either a sheer fabric or have some sort of a mesh piece on them so that you can see what's inside. The last thing I'll mention, I think, about packing cubes is that it's kind of nice to have a few different colors so that you know, okay, all the, all the things that I'm going to wear dressy are gonna be in the blue pack and all the things that are the t-shirts are gonna be in the pink pack. It just also helps to help, it also helps to come, it also can help you car, it also can help you come, it also can help you compartmentalize and separate and kind of segregate what things are in which bags. And that's really it um, for packing. I do always pack my shoes. I'll probably wear these shoes on the plane because they're the biggest ones that I'm taking. But if I were taking, I might take some running shoes. If I were taking running shoes, I would pack socks and or um, sunglasses or I have a band, you know, kind of thing that holds my phone when I run. I can, it's kind of bulky. I can pack that inside my shoes. I pack my shoes full. I have a size 10 foot. It is a lot of real estate that um, this will take up in my suitcase. And so I like to pack my shoes filled with things so that I'm not wasting space. I have a couple different shoe bag options. As I said, this is the shoe bag option that came from Ikea. And so my shoes will fit in here, usually with a couple other things. So again, if this were going to be like my workout bundle, I could fit a little pair of shorts rolled up and a little tank top and maybe a sports bra and some socks and things stuck in my shoes. And then this would just go into my suitcase as is and it would have all my workout stuff right in there. I think that's it. And I think now I need to kind of make my final decisions and roll up the rest of this, decide which blazer is going. Uh, defuzz my blue top and uh, get my stuff in my bag so I can go celebrate Henry's college graduation. So I hope this was helpful. I love to pack a suitcase. Actually, for my established clients, if you're an established client already and you don't know this, listen up. For established clients, I do offer a service where I can create a travel capsule for you. I can create a packing list. I have even been known to go to clients' homes and actually physically pack their suitcase or have Zoom calls with them if I am not in the same location. And literally help them pack their suitcase online so that there is no guesswork, there is no confusion. They absolutely learn exactly how to do it and then they can do it themselves from there on. So if you would like to be an established client, Style Therapy is how we work together one-on-one. -on -one. There is a link down below. I offer a free one-hour consult call that will really truly help you understand what's going on with your style and I'll help you decide if Style Therapy is the right fit for you right now. In addition, I have two courses that I have revamped and updated. And they are two things that I really am very proud of and I just was not selling them. I had them in the archives. I wasn't using them for anything. And I realized that that actually isn't fair, that they are helpful to women. And I don't want to gatekeep and not make that possible for you. If you're really in a position where you're not ready to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that isn't something that is in your wheelhouse or your budget or in on your radar at all. And yet you would really love to have some DIY help a little more specific than, um, and a little more kind of step-by-step -step than, than the videos. Although I try to be pretty step-by-step -step in my videos. Um, these two courses are really exceptional in my opinion. And so one of them is called Closet Love and it will really help you get to a place where you love your closet. You enjoy opening your closet, you understand what's in there and you love the way it looks. And that ultimately makes it more fun to get dressed and more fun to do the work of creating a wardrobe you really love. And the other one is called Wake Up Your Wardrobe and it is I've had lots of success with this and it kind of makes me chuckle that it hasn't been available now for quite a while, but it's available now. Um, again, so Wake Up Your Wardrobe actually helps you use what you already own to begin to elevate your style and step into kind of the style persona you want to have, but you're not quite there yet. 
doesn't require any shopping with the exception of purchasing the course. It allows you to use what you already own to begin to see your style and your outfits and your self in new ways through your clothing. So if you have any questions, you can drop them down below, but the links are down below in the description for both Closet Love and Wake Up Your Wardrobe. You can purchase those and uh, get started right away. It's an immediate download. I'm always over on Instagram sharing what's happening in my world, both with my real life and with my style life and sometimes with my clients. Um, I'd love to have you come visit over there at Kristen Kane Style. That's all I have for you today. I got to get ready for Wheels Up. I hope you have a really, really beautiful week and I'll see you next Friday. Thanks so much for being here.